Hey folks, Jesse Randall. We're out here at the MSU Forestry Innovation Center. Today is an exciting day. You saw us just a couple of weeks ago. We were out here, it was a bare field. The snow had just melted and Kyle and I had uh, laid the plantation out. And today is the day the seedlings arrived. They've been in our walk-in cooler. We've kept them at about 34 degrees Fahrenheit. And the soil temperature has finally warmed up enough and the, the soil moisture has gone down, so it's perfect time to, uh, to plant these seedlings. What we're doing today is, is uh, you see the guys on the, the tractor and the, the machine planter. We're going along and we're planting this research plantation. And, and again, we're marking out eight feet between the rows and then six feet between the trees within the row. And what we've done is we've worked with two different suppliers of uh, bare root seedlings. These uh, that we're planting today came from Lower Michigan and they are what we call plugs plus one. So they, original, they originated in plug uh, cell trays. They were transplanted in the field and had one year of growth in the field before they were lifted, sorted, graded, and put into a cooler and then shipped to us. So these are plugs plus one, and these are Fraser firs. These trees are going to be part of a, a research trial on herbicides, on, on the various herbicides. We're also going to be doing, later on as they get larger, we're gonna be doing some work on them with time of shearing and also on chemical and mechanical means to decone them. And, and one of the major costs that producers now are faced with turns into or, or, or is out of uh, having to de decone those, those trees because nobody wants a Christmas tree with uh, the old cone stalks sticking on them. And we're seeing more and more cones on some of these. Long term, what we're also going to do with these is we're going to look at the trees every year they're going to be evaluated for their cone production. And if we have trees that are eight or nine or 10 years old, as they're reaching Christmas tree age and they have not thrown a lot of cones or borne a lot of cones, we're gonna select those trees, put them into a common garden, and we're gonna have those as future seed stock because something is different about those trees. They're all gonna have been sprayed the same. They will have been sheared the same. So we're gonna look and see genetically, is there something different with those trees that causes them to cone later in life? If they do that, then those progeny, we hope, would have fewer cones. So we're gonna be selecting for those that do not bear cones early in their lifespan. And so we really have a multi-use plantation going in today. There's gonna be a thousand Frasers uh, that are Roan Mountain variety. We're gonna put a thousand Frasers that are Mount Rogers. And then we're gonna put in some Canaan fir, uh, about 600 of those uh, on the lower end of this field. Now annually, this farm is going to put in between two and 3,000 trees per, uh, per year on about 900 trees per acre. That's what our, our uh, six by eight spacing is gonna work out for. So the machine, it's running awfully slow right now. Mainly we're, we're getting the new guy trained on that, that planting machine. Also, because it is a research plantation, we really want these to be cross-checked. So all the rows are aligned and all of the cross rows are aligned. It helps with our management and our record keeping. So they're going a little slower than normally. Uh, if we were in just pure production and, and uh, we had two people on the planter, what we would do is go a lot faster. We'd plant about 10,000 trees per day with that machine. That's a long day, but we could do it. Um, and, and just jam these guys in. We're taking our time. You can see the planting slit that has been opened. It's got really good soil moisture. What we need to do is after the trees have been planted, we're gonna run by, we have a, a John Deere Gator with some turf tires on it. We're gonna run right along the side of this furrow and just make sure we make good soil contact with those roots. We also want to fill that chamber in um, that the planting slit has opened because we don't want any air gaps in there. Those air gaps can one, dry the root system out, and two, 
what they will do is uh, allow the mice and the voles to get down in there and have a very protected runway in the winter time. Well, mice and voles, if that tree root is in its way, it's just going to eat it. So what we, we don't want them to dry out with the air and we don't want uh, mice and voles to get in there. So we're going to pack that down and provide a good planting base. Earlier, when we got these seedlings, we, we evaluated their root systems. And again, we don't want to plant anything with a trailing J root. So we've trimmed those roots to match the shoe of our tree planter and the coulter wheel. And so our roots are never any longer than the depth that that coulter wheel can go down into the ground. And so we're gonna show you how those trees uh, or those seedlings were, were trimmed up, how their roots were trimmed up. Also, another big thing is it's a beautiful day out. It's sunny, but it's cold, all right? We're standing with multiple layers on of, of coats and sweatshirts, so it is cold. So you don't think about it, but the trees that are in the bag waiting to be planted are beginning to desiccate. And they're in a plastic bag inside a box. And the worst thing you can do is have that box out in the sun. And so, uh, Again, the wind is gonna dry it out, the sun is gonna bake it. So we wanna make sure that that box stays in the, the shade and also sealed up to stay uh, as moist as possible. So folks, this is how those seedlings came from the nursery. They come in bundles of 25 for easy counting. And you can really see that these started off as beautiful plugs. Right there's an individual plug, but then it went to the field for one year and all these fine roots grew. These are just absolutely beautiful seedlings. Now, people always ask, now, where are you gonna plant this seedling? And it's really cool because what you can see is there's a transition zone. You can see the green chlorophyll, you can see the yellow transition, and then you can see the red roots. And it's right in here that we wanna plant that at that depth. So that is the depth that they're gonna go in the ground. Anything deeper than that, the seedling struggles. Anything shallower than that, and the roots will desiccate and the plant will die. So you have a very narrow window of planting depth. And so that's one of the biggest issues we see with any new tree planting that's having a hard time. It's the actual planter depth that you're gonna be on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this box back up. We're gonna seal this box because we really don't want air and sunlight getting in there. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tuck it in under the truck. It's about 38, 39 degrees out here today. Uh, and so they're not gonna overheat if you keep them out of the sun and also keep them sealed from the wind. So let's go down and we'll check out uh, how the guys are planting. questions we have is how is uh, or how do you space the trees within the row some planters come with a clicker that every time it clicks it's on a set uh, diameter rotating wheel and you set that to click what we're using is a, a drag chain and it is a marked chain that we have marked at six feet and so you can see the yellow or the neon green piece of flagging that is on that drag chain when that yellow or neon green piece of flagging reaches the tree that was just planted, Mitchell then puts a seedling in the ground and he's holding it until it comes through the shoe back to the packer wheels. With that, we're at six feet spacing. So these are fir trees. They can be planted a little bit closer together because they are normally taller with a with a slender shape if you were planting pines you would need to plant them farther apart to have a wider base of that tree the reason we went to eight foot spacings it matches what we're going to use in here to mow these seedlings or mow the rows in between you can see we're starting from a pretty dead fallow field uh, that was killed off last year
Here's one of those examples. As soon as Mitch put it in the ground, he yelled out that it's high. So if we left this seedling as it is right now, uh, this seedling would be dead. Uh, you can see that the top two inches of that plug, uh, it has uh, been exposed to air. And if, if we, we caught it early enough, so what I can do is I can work down and if I can press the seedling down, that's great. If I can't, what I'm gonna do is actually, there's all this loose dirt. I'm actually going to build it up around that seedling. Uh, and this one will just have a root system that's a little bit higher. If we would have waited for this seedling uh, and, and caught this seedling at the end of the planting day, it probably already would have been dried out enough that it would have been dead. So as soon as he yelled it out, uh, that's also why we like to plant in teams of three. Uh, one person is normally running seedlings back and forth. Another person's driving the tractor and the third person is doing all the work on the tree planter. But it also is in cases like this, when and, and it happens when those uh, seedlings come up a little shallow, they can call out, you can have it fixed right away. And then it makes it easier at the end of the day, not having to go back and look for ones that you remembered that were shallow, you've addressed them right away. It's just one of those things that is a, a, a dollar, dollar 25 seedling that would have been dead um, before it, it really had a chance to grow and, and uh, survive. So we've done that and now we can just keep moving on. And uh, again, it's a beautiful day to plant trees. I actually wish for two things, that it wasn't as windy as it is out here and that it was actually overcast. I really like to plant on overcast days. The trees seems just, it, it does really well. Uh, but we're out here, it's cold, there's good soil moisture. I'm not too worried. These trees should be just fine. We're actually getting these trees in right on time, maybe even a little bit ahead of schedule with the spring that we've had here in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan.